and today in this video we will be discussing the first module of data communication it's a theoretical subject and i have picked up all the topics and from each topic i will be discussing the important points okay so without wasting any more time let's get started before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel the first topic is uh, data communication suppose that there are two devices and the data which is getting transferred between each of these devices is nothing but data communication the sending and receiving of data so whenever a sender uh, sends, uh, sends the data to the receiver what will be the uh, receiver's expectations firstly the receiver, uh, receiver wants the data to be on time secondly the data getting transmitted should not have any errors means uh, it should not cause any errors in between transmission okay so those are the two things and um, then the the first one is sender sender sends the data means the message is the second component and the receiver is the third component and which uh, transmission medium you are choosing like uh, wireless or by wire that's the fourth one and protocols means the uh, rules to be followed while transmitting we'll be uh, looking into more depth about the protocol what are the different types of data representation see data are of uh, three types first one is text okay means letters and bits and uh, second one is numbers like the binary hexadecimal octal and decimal image can include the videos also see how is actually the image getting stored inside the memory for black and white image this will be the grids okay in the display screen and if you have to store, uh, show black it will be one one bit will be stored in the memory and at that particular position black will be shown if it's zero that means white will be shown okay so black and white image is stored in that way what about the color image color image all the colors are the combination of red green and blue so for each of this pixel see here for each of these pixels there will be the bits uh, specifying the ratio in which red green and blue are mixed so in that uh, ratio it will be shown that particular color okay so in that way color image is uh, stored inside the memory and audio there are three types of uh, there are two types of audio first one is analog and digital the, uh, the digital uh, audio will be storing purpose and the analog is the normal uh, signals which we use in daily life okay coming to video video is nothing but the combination of images so how images are getting stored it will be just changing in a uh, very rapid speed okay that's known as video three ways of data flow between two devices first one is simplex simplex means one way either the data will be flowing from this direction or from this direction in this case one example is mainframe to monitor okay so the data will be flowing just from this way uh, from the mainframe to the monitor okay that's simplex one is half duplex okay half duplex means either receive or transmit okay but both can't happen at the same time so two devices which are uh, pcs like normal computers can be taken as an example and you can think this way as a one way road okay either the cars can go from this way or from this way but uh, both can't happen at the same time that's known as half duplex in full duplex you can consider that as two lane road where the uh, transmission of the data is uh, from one side here and the opposite direction will be from here okay so both that uh, sender and the receiver can share the data one is receiving another one is sending okay what is a network a network is nothing but a um, connection of the devices which can share the information okay so internet is an example of network and there are three uh, criteria which the network should um, fulfill first one is performance it means faster delivery of data second is reliability means in case of failure it should recover quickly and the security means it should uh, protect the data from damage or losses there are four ways in which the devices are connected so those four ways are mesh star bus and ring so let's see one by one in bus topology all the devices will be connected to a single bus and suppose that this is the device one and this is the device two if device one has to send the data to device two it will send the data to the bus and the receiver will receive the data from the bus okay that's bus topology the second one is star topology in this all the devices will be connected to a single port which is hub so if this uh, this device has to send some data it will send to the hub and hub will send the data to the receiver okay that's star topology in ring topology the device will send the data through the bus and from the bus it will be transmitting to each device if the device is the receiver it will receive the data or else it will pass the data to the next device it will uh, go on until the receiver receives the data okay that's ring topology in mesh topology each device will be connected with each other so it will be a one to one communication between the devices okay that's mesh topology there are two types of popular uh, networks which is lan and wan lan means local area network in local area network the building or the campus can be taken as an example 
in which the buildings will have the connections from underground with each other okay so this will form a LAN network and to send the data it will have the source address and the destination address and uh, by using these two address the network will identify where the data is to be sent okay so this is the uh, local area network suppose that there has to be a network between two states or two countries at that time the connections will be taken from under the ocean okay from under the ocean the connections of the cable will be made and the head towers which are having the networks will be connected with each other okay that's known as wide area network and internetwork means see if you have to connect two offices okay in each office there is a local area network and to connect each of these wide area network will not be used internet network will be used okay how will internet network work it will be working by using routers okay what will router do uh, the router will have the connections from all these uh, devices and uh, the routers will be connected with each other by using a point to point WAN okay so in this way we can form a internet network switching is a very important topic in uh, switching what will be the thing is the switch will be used what does the switch do it will take the data from all these devices and transfer it to the other network okay so in case of live transfer we'll use circuit switch network in this case the switch will not store any data it will directly transfer the data directly from the devices okay and in the second one which is uh, packet switch network in this the uh, switch will store the data and then transfer it one by one okay so in this case it's not live transfer but it's uh, storing and transferring okay this topic will be looking what is internet made up of and how to access the internet from the older times to the newer times what are the changes being made so what is the internet made up of internet has the backbone which will have all the uh, data being transmitted and the provider network will take up the data service okay from the backbone so the uh, examples are bsnl and airtel and uh, the customer network are the uh, customers which are registered to the uh, network providers okay so we are the customers we are taking the data from the provider network and the backbone is providing the data for the provider network okay there are four ways of accessing the internet the first one is using telephone networks this is internet service provider and this is your home so in the internet service provider you will have two options either dial-up service or dsl service so when you take up any service you will have to connect it with the modem and the modem will be connected with your land phone which is telephone okay so in dial-up service you will have voice or data at one time either you can call or use the internet in dial-up service or in uh, dsl service you will have the separate lines for the voice and data okay so you can use the internet and you can also uh, use the telephone for calling purpose at the same time okay second way of accessing internet is by using cable networks okay by uh, using a cable network you can connect, uh, connect directly to the uh, internet provider also by using a van we can connect to a wireless network and if there is a large company it can itself become an internet provider and uh, get a high speed internet network okay it's are nothing but the rules to be followed by the internet users or the providers okay there are few steps by which our specification becomes a standard we'll be uh, looking for an example so an uh, internet standard is nothing but a new idea to be implemented in the internet user community so that it will help the uh, users and the society okay so one example we can take as ascii values which were added in the um, internet community and what does ascii value do it will make the uh, storing of the data and the transferring of the data more efficient okay by using the ascii codes so this is the idea and specification initially and when it is tested by several groups it's stable well understood and is in interest of the internet community then it becomes a proposed standard after that if it's uh, implemented two times successfully it becomes a draft standard and finally to the main authorities if you uh, give a successful demonstration of its implementation and the advantages it becomes an internet standard and it will be included in the official document and in case if it's not successful then it will become a historic okay it will be in the category of historic now there are some specifications which are just um, uh, applicable in some experimental situations and uh, those come under the experimental category and some of the uh, specifications contain the general information and the tutorials information related to the internet that comes under the informational category okay rfc's means request for comment when a uh, standard becomes a uh, internet standard and before becoming the internet standard there are many levels like required recommended elective limited use and not recommended okay so these are self explanatory and uh, these are the different types of levels in which the uh, internet standard falls okay
There are some groups and societies which uh, handle the support for uh, internet standard process and the technical support for research communities. So uh, there are few of those uh, groups which are mentioned here and they have their own uh, tasks. Okay. So those come under internet administration. We're discussing about protocol layering. First, let's understand what's protocol. Protocol defines the rules that both the sender and the receiver should follow so that the communication will happen effectively. Okay. Let's now see what's protocol layering. In the first scenario, uh, sender is directly sending the message to the receiver. In the second scenario, you can see that the sender is sending the message which is in the plain text and it is encrypted and then it is getting transferred. So it's a three layer process and it, uh, the opposite happens in the receiver side. It's first decrypted, then it's uh, converted into plain text and then the receiver receives the message. Okay. So the number of modules which are present inside the process is nothing but the layering. Okay. Few principles of pro uh, protocol layering. The first one is the in each layer, the uh, layer should be able to perform two opposite tasks at, a, uh, at the same time. For example, if P1 is trying to communicate with P2, so the layers uh, will be two. First, in the first layer, P1 will speak and P2 will listen. In the second layer, what will happen is P2 will speak and P1 will listen. So either of these will be executed at a time. Okay. And uh, each layer will have the opposite task. Uh, in the case, if uh, P1 is listening, P2 should be speaking. If P2, uh, P1 is uh, speaking, P2, uh, P2 should be listening. Okay. The principle has to do with multiple layers. In multiple layers, each layer will have the identical objects. Okay. So in the first layer, if conversation is happening without any other uh, further process, it will be direct communication. If the communication is by plain text and it's not in uh, encryption or encryption, at that time, the uh, both the objects will be of plain text. At the third layer, both will be of encrypted text. Okay. So the uh, main principle is at each layer, the objects uh, must be identical on both the sides. Okay. Logical connection means uh, at each layer, the objects are identical, so they can have the same connection. Like for the first layer, it will be listen or talk. In the second layer, encrypt or decrypt. In the third layer, send or receive. Okay. Since the objects are identical, they'll have a connection between each of them. Okay. TCP IP protocol suite is nothing but the set of protocols means set of rules to be followed at different layers. Okay, so there are five layers. We'll be looking at each layer one by one. First one is physical layer. Physical layer means the direct communication wirelessly or by wire. Okay, so starting from the basic level, the sender and the receiver will uh, send the data through the transmission medium. That's the physical layer. Coming up, the data leak layer is the layer which will connect the two LANs. Okay, LANs or WANs. So the uh, data will be transferred between the devices and finally the data will be transferred between the two, let, uh, two networks. That's the data link layer. The third one is network layer. Network layer is a bit more um, um, large than the data link layer. Okay, But the thing is same, the data will be transferred between two LANs or two WANs. But here the host will be used and the data will be connected directly between the hosts. The fourth one is a transport layer. Transport layer does not perform any transfer of the data, but it will ensure the um, proper carrying of the data and the security of the data will be ensured by the transport layer. It will have the rules uh, in, under the TCP, which is transmission control protocol, which will carry out the task. The last layer is the application layer means, uh, for example, when we use WhatsApp, we'll send the messages to the other person without uh, worrying about how it will be getting transferred. Okay. So that's the application layer at the most high level, what uh, we use like uh, at the user level, the task being carried out and the applications being used come under the application layer. Encapsulation and decapsulation is nothing but uh, while sending the message from one device to other device for the ensuring of the safety and the accuracy, we'll be using encapsulation. So first the uh, message will be uh, starting from here, it will go to the application layer. In the application layer, uh, there will be no encapsulation, it will be just uh, the direct sending of the message. See when we send any email or something, we will just send the, uh, send the email, right? So that's the application layer. Then when it comes to transport layer, at that time a header will be added, which is of the transport header. And in the network layer, the network header will be added. Then the, in the data link layer, data link header will be added. While decapsulating it, uh, what happens is, firstly the data, uh, data link layer will be decapsulated, then the network layer, then the transport layer. And finally the message will be shown in the screen by using the application layer. Okay. Since at each layer many objects are being used, so at each layer we need an address to distinguish between various layers. Okay. So at the application layer the address will be like www.google.com. 
at the transport layer you will have port numbers at the network layer ip address will be used at the last layer which is data link layer mac address will be used for each of the device connected mac address will be used okay multiplexing and demultiplexing are the concepts where uh, many data will be input and from those you have to select one of the data okay so uh, according to each layer the data will be filtered out and the uh, needed data will be selected in the last layer in demultiplexing the main input will be here and it will be transferred to the upper layers okay and each layer will have different types of data that will be distributed among the uh, last layer okay that's demultiplexing OSI model is a model developed by the uh, computer researchers uh, by defining the protocols for network communications. This is the same as the previous one where, uh, where we had five uh, protocol layers but in this two uh, layers are new which is presentation and session layer. By using this model we can, um, we can transfer the data in a more secure and efficient manner. Let's see the um, application of each layer. Okay, So the first one is the physical layer. Physical layer is the uh, normal movement of bits from one node to another node by using a transmission medium like wire or by wireless method. Second is data link layer. Here you will have the um, LANs and the WANs connected and the connections between each other by using nodes. The third one is the network layer. In the network layer it will be the from, uh, from the source destination source to the destination like from host to host it will be connected. The fourth one is transport layer. In transport layer, the process to process delivery is done means in this layer, the transmission will be monitored and uh, the secure data will be, the, uh, the secure data transfer will be established, okay. This, uh, this uses a protocol TCP for the transportation of the data. Fifth one is session layer. In session layer, the actual transfer of the data starts after the establishment of the data transfer, the interaction between the two systems is set up and uh, in the presentation layer, the exchange between the two systems is carried out after checking the syntax and the semantics of the information. Finally, the application layer which we use uh, this for the users to access the network and um, share the information with the other systems topic we'll be looking at some basic concepts of the first layer which is physical layer means what type of signals are there and how the transmission happens and uh, what is the speed of transmission and what are the errors that can occur during the transmission okay you know that the signals can be either analog or digital means uh, whenever we speak something and what you're listening right now is analog signal and the way it is stored in the uh, memory is nothing but the digital signal now how the actual transfer happens from the analog to digital see here this is the uh, 1 bit and this is the 0 bit okay so whenever the uh, signal is high here it will be 1 bit okay whenever the signal uh, becomes low here it, sta uh, it starts to reduce at that time the signal will become 0 here so in the memory it will be stored as at this point of time it is 1 then 0 then 1 then 0 like that it will be stored inside the memory okay so to convert this into the analog signal we'll be using the devices by which we can convert 1 to 0 and by finding out the length we can form a curve like this and in the same way we can continue to produce the analog signal signals means when we are transferring the data either it can be transferred by a positive voltage or by a zero voltage so at each point of time uh, we will be looking if the signal is high or low okay so 8 bits per second are transferred in a normal system and it can vary from system to system like uh, 16 bit 32 bit or 64 bit okay Transmission impairment is a very important topic and let's understand what it is. Transmission impairment means while transferring the data from device 1 to device 2 at that time in between some errors happen okay. So that's nothing but the transmission impairment. So what are the causes for transmission impairment? There are three causes first one is attenuation. Attenuation means while we transfer the data it, uh, its signal uh, tends to reduce okay. Means uh, when we have transferred the data the signal is very high as it goes on it becomes low okay. To um, to overcome this issue what we can use is amplifiers what does amplifier do it amplifies the signal and keeps the signal amplitude constant okay and the second one is distortion okay distortion means distortion means when we transfer the signal it uh, its uh, shape or the form changes because of various issues like uh, different speeds uh, through a medium and uh, due to delays okay so what we can do in this case is by using some devices we can uh, make the shape approximately constant from this errors to the uh, original shape okay that's overcome by using various devices okay so when we are transferring a signal from one place to another there are external sources from which the noise occurs right so those uh, signals also affect the original data so in this way the data gets corrupted and to overcome this problem we use filters by filters we can get the um, approximate original data okay by re uh, removing the noises 
data can be transferred at a time it depends on three factors first one is bandwidth available means at a time how much data is available to be transferred like 8 bits can be transferred at uh, simultaneously or 16 bits or 32 bits okay that's bandwidth and the second factor uh, which is level of signals see while converting the digital to analog signals we have various levels means if we use four levels we'll have uh, four bits representation here okay so the levels can be of this type okay it can vary from four levels if we use eight levels at that time it will be more bigger so in that way the levels of signals plays an important factor in mining how much data can be transferred at time then the quality of channel it's obvious that the, the more better the quality of the channel is the more data can be transferred okay how can the performance of a network can be measured it can be measured by using two ways first one is for the analog signal analog signal it depends on the bandwidth means um, how many hertz can be transferred at a particular instant and uh, by uh, and for the digital signals how many mb per second can be transferred is the measuring factor for the bandwidth of a digital signal okay the more the bandwidth the more better the network is throughput is a very important uh, concept because whenever the device has the bandwidth as 1 mb but the link should also be able to uh, support the transfer of 1 mb right but it's not always the case sometimes the link will have lesser uh, bandwidth so how will uh, how will we calculate the bandwidth of a uh, link consider this question here see a network has a bandwidth of 10 mb per second okay so the network's bandwidth is 10 mb per second and can pass only average of uh, uh, 12,000 frames per minute and each frame carrying of 10,000 bits so total number of bits is this much and per minute means 60 seconds so how much mb can be transferred is when we calculate it we'll get as 2 mb per second so since the bandwidth is 10 uh, 10 mb per second for each device still we can only transfer 2 mb per second okay because of the network link so the better the network is the more throughput of the network will be and uh, the more data you can transfer between the devices okay the on which the uh, performance of a network depends is latency latency is nothing but the time taken for a message to be received completely okay so latency depends on four factors let's uh, look each of the factor one by one first one is propagation time it means how much time it uh, takes for a bit okay a single bit to be transferred from the source to the destination that's propagation time propagation of a bit then transmission time transmission time means how much time it takes uh, for a message to be transmitted through a medium and the third one is queuing time queuing time means before the uh, device can send or receive the message it holds for some time that time is nothing but the queuing time and the fourth one is processing delay processing delay is the time taken by the routers while processing the data for the packet headers okay propagation and the transmission times for a 5 mb message and if the bandwidth is 1 mb per second assume that the distance between the sender and receiver is 12,000 km and light travels at 2.4 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so what's the difference between propagation time and transmission time propagation time is just for one bit while transmission time is for the whole data okay so um see here uh, what's the time taken time taken is nothing but the distance traveled by speed what's the distance traveled 12,000 km so 12,000 into 1000 because kilometer should be converted into meters then time taken uh, the speed given is 2.4 okay so we'll be writing here the speed and calculating the propagation time this for just one bit for calculating the whole bit we need uh, transmission time for 5 mb it is uh, 5 mb into 8 okay because uh, it's a megabyte so into if you convert into bytes if you convert into bits one byte is 8 bits okay so we'll be considering uh, the multiplication factor of 8 here and we'll be writing the total number of bits divided by 10 raised to 6 why 10 raised to 6 because uh, 1 mb means 10 raised to 6 uh, megabytes then we'll get the total time which is 40 seconds so for 5 mb it will take uh, total uh, 40 seconds and for just one byte it will take 50 milliseconds okay so that's the difference between propagation and transmission time